Well, how would you like to take the kiddos to see Lily's Purple Plastic Purse at Stages Theater <laughs> Company in Hopkins for half the price? That's today's Super Bargain, the show which runs 60 Minutes, brings the popular children's book to life, and it is suitable for all ages. Tickets are regularly are $15 for adults and $12 for kids but, and seniors, but they're now 50% off when you order over the phone before 5 p.m. on Sunday. And make sure you ask for the Twin Cities Live Super Bargain. Lily's Purple Plastic Purse runs through October 20th, and Stages Theater Company, I just, I've been there before, they have such a great facility. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you haven't taken Dakota and Delaney to a show there, it is so much fun. I don't need your guilt now. Okay, I'm not okay? trying to guilt you. I'm trying to do everything I can as a parent. I haven't got them there yet, okay. but I will. Jeez. <laughs> Just, kidding. Just joking. There's some issues at the Eckert House that we would like to maybe tackle <laughs> later on this broadcast. Okay, uh, if I say bite me. I thought you were just being rude. No. I thought and you were mad at me about the stages I'm totally theater. Not, I'm not down. totally not mad at you. I'm channeling my inner Mimi, you know, from the Drew Carey show. Oh. Bite me was her signature line. Oh, well, Mimi didn't get her start there. Actress Kathy Kinney was a regular on the very popular New Heart, continued her career on everything from Seinfeld to Full House. But she is in town playing a new character, and she's here to tell us all about it. Kathy Kinney is here with us on Twin Cities Live. Nice to see you. Thank you. It is kind of hard to recognize you without all the blue eyeshadow, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very grateful, very grateful, and I just, I wanted to give you, it's not a line reading, but it's a, uh, bite me. Oh, okay. thank you. Just a hint. Oh, Would you say that a couple more times to me, just? Bite me. <laughs> and it, it involves your head going up, bite me. <laughs> See how that goes? Which brings me uh, actually to a great, my first question that was going to come later in this interview, but <laughs> when you were doing the show and with Drew and such a, a group of such talented actors, was there a lot of ad-libbing going on? I mean, how much was actually written down on a script? You know, uh, on a show like that, you really don't ad-lib. You, uh, you honor your writers. We had brilliant writers and, you know, that's why a show works mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you just, you don't necessarily have the best actors in the world, but the idea of the show and the actors and and incredible writers and yeah so we didn't we just spoke what they wrote so where did bite me come from was that something that you thought of or a writer yeah. came up with it once and it worked and you just it, stuck it with worked it? you know we because of and I'm sure you've run into this there are things you can and cannot say yeah and uh, uh, you can say butt weasel <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm an expert. I know these things. Okay, you I'm can. I'm totally saying that yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, you the can way. call anybody a butt weasel that you want. I kind of uh, wanted to call you that just a couple minutes ago. I didn't even hurt your feelings. I'm just joking. And then you could have said, "Bite me," because <laughs> now you know how to say it. So, uh, yeah, it was weird. Uh, the the writers were brilliant. There were a couple writers in the writers' room that were Mimi, and yeah. uh, they just wrote for Mimi and I I just said it it was fun it's so fun to have you here and I know this Minnesota of course is very close to home you're from Wisconsin Wisconsin I uh, am tell us about growing up in the dairy state with um with your condition I know my condition <laughs> uh, you there's a sign at, uh, at the border actually I'm not allowed and uh, my family has been banished because <laughs> I was born and raised there with a dairy allergy this is severe yeah. I mean, beyond lactose Like, you're not a person who's saying, okay. I'm just not doing dairy. It's like No, a I'm like, when I call in my breakfast in the morning, I write in a big scrawl, severe dairy allergy, <laughs> like that, and hope that they believe me, because you never know. And if someone showed up with dairy at your door, you would say what to them? Bite me. <laughs> That's right. And then I would take it, and I'd throw it like that. No. I, the, but it's hard for me to eat here. It's hard yeah. because I believe there's dairy in the water yes, here we put and it in, in the water. central Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a definite problem. But I travel a lot, and I have learned to say things like, je suis lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which comes in really handy. So when you were growing up in Wisconsin, in Stevens Point, mm -hmm. I mean, was were you thinking about being an actress? When did you start to gravitate towards that? Actually, I was a bartender. I was the head bartender for Polish weddings at oh, Bernard's you. Supper Club. And I only, you know, add that Polish wedding because everybody was Polish. So <laughs> right? it was just a wedding. But uh, <laughs> I had no intention of being an actor. It's truly, I'm the perfect example that there is some power greater than us that just pushes you and helps you along and uh, next thing I knew I was on the Drew Carey show saying bite me. <laughs> so I was told that you developed this character based on a job that you had at a TV station answering the phones. 
Well, that's where I got the background, but I someone else actually developed that character. Okay. I worked at WCBS TV in New York. Mm -hmm. ah. And I definitely I said things a lot worse than bite me <laughs> when I worked for the head of the uh, of the station and uh, I did not like being there. I was not a happy camper, so that's where I learned how to be Mimi. You but, just channeled that when yeah. you got to Tell us a little character. bit about Mimi's makeup and the process of getting those eyes all looking like that. Oh, man. And that's no. a beautiful dress there, too, by Thank the way. you. Thank you. <laughs> Handmade by people who are now blind, I'm sure. Uh, you know, the funny thing was, I really don't think I was wearing any more makeup than possibly you, you even have on right now because yeah. you know you have to wear a certain amount of makeup to keep the light bouncing off just right but it happened to be so extremely blue and uh, so everyone else would be out enjoying the the end of the taping and I would in the bar and I would still be washing my face because it took a long time to get that blue off just but, and that, that's there. why I love the character that I'm playing now Mrs. P so much because she just has she's got red hair and orange lipstick and uh, and no eye blue stuff at all. <laughs> Just a little orange above her eyes, but look, isn't she cute? Well, and Mrs. P has such a great mission. You have to tell us more um, about Mrs. P and what you're doing with her. I, w I would love to, uh, and that's and why I'm here. Yeah. Because uh, I'm all about, and, and it, there's three of us that are partners in Mrs. P, and one of them is Dana Plouts and Clegg Graham, who was a head writer and executive producer on Drew Carey's show. Nice. And he came to me and he said, I'm afraid that we're, we're going to lose the ability to have children be read to by someone who loves them. And I want to create something online. And I was like, count me in. Oh I'm my there. gosh, that's so cool. Yeah. And then we went through all the looks. And oh, here, here I am at the school. <laughs> Yesterday, I was at the Nellie Stone Johnson School because a little girl there, um, whose name is Angelina Hare, won an award for reading the most number of books. It was yes. 835 oh, no way. over the summer. She read them in 64 hours. And I, I was there with our friends from Mayan Reader, and they gave her a $10 gift certificate and then a big gift certificate. She was just, she was so sweet and very nervous because she was in front of everyone. <laughs> and, uh, but they're, they're great. What we're trying to do, all of us together, is, you know, create an understanding that reading is cool and so are you mm -hmm. if you read. Yeah. The people who read are leading an exciting life. And with Mayan you can go online and access you know, over 4,000 titles and lots of fairy tales, but it really helps kids because it's interesting. It's an interesting place to go and they can find things to read about that they enjoy. And Mrs. P has um, has quite a distinct accent. Could you share a little she bit does. with us? Well, we were going to have, we said, should she be Midwestern? Like, oh, I'm going to read that fairy tale to you right now. <laughs> but we just felt it lacked a little romance. <laughs> so Mrs. P is a little bit Irish, but we say she's a little more ish than she is ire. <laughs> and I tell everyone, I live on a small island off the coast of Wisconsin. <laughs> and it has four seasons there, winter, spring, summer, and fall all the time. And right now I'm living in summer because <laughs> you can grow crops there all the time. Oh my so, gosh. And I think that uh, that, that accent's very soothing. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, our partner Clay has often <laughs> fallen asleep nice. while listening to me. Kathy, thank you thank so you much Kathy. for being here. Awesome. That is so cool. So we've posted a link to Mrs. P's website on ours, TwinCitiesLive.com. So get on there with your kids, and uh, and they can experience Mrs. P reading a little story to them. Thanks, Kathy. Reading is cool, yes. and so are you. Totally. And, and before we go, uh, one more time, please, Kay. Bite me. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Done. Still to come, why you might want to add apples to your football game watching foods. And I think Captain Phillips looks so good. Rusty has seen it. He is here with his review and his opinions on the Minnesotan who's starring alongside Tom Hanks.